Well, I've already cried, cried twice tonight, so I'm going to try and keep it at that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. I know it would mean the world to my grandmother to hear those thoughtful and beautiful words that you shared with us tonight. And on my grandmother's behalf, I'd like to thank the Martha Hill Dance Fund, Ernesta, and the rest of the organizers of the event, the catering and cleanup staff, and the rest of you for coming here to celebrate all the award winners tonight. My name is Elsa Hardy, and it is my honor to accept this award on behalf of my grandmother, Mary Hinkson, who unfortunately... Unfortunately, is very ill and could not be here tonight. While we are here primarily to recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of Mary Hinkson as a dancer, to me, she was, is, and will always be, first and foremost, a grandmother. In fact, I know her by a very different name, Peachy. <laughs> as the story goes, she took to calling me her Peach because I closely resembled one. <laughs> And when I learned to speak, I imitated her. Over the years, Peach became Peachy, and this just became her name. Growing up, my brother Jeremy and I didn't know Peachy as the breathtaking modern dancer who traveled the world and broke racial boundaries, as she's described in the program. Nor did we know her as the adept teacher, mentor, and employer, as Laura has just described. We knew her as a horrible cook. <laughs> burn food to a crisp <laughs> in the microwave. <laughs> we knew her as the woman who picked us up from school every Monday, bags full of Jefferson Market. Anyone remember Jefferson Market? You see a thing. In tow. When we got home, she would heat up a rotisserie chicken, frozen green beans, and white rice. Looking back, it was a rather plain dinner, but for Jeremy and me, it was the most exciting meal imaginable. We knew her as the woman who, after dinner, would put us in the bath and scrub us until our skin was red and sore, and then make us dry between each one of our toes. Can you think of anything worse? We couldn't either. We knew her as someone who loved classical music and Romare Bearden and spoke adoringly of her husband, Julian, who passed away before we were born, but who came to life through peachy stories of him. We knew her as the warm, loving, and generous woman in our lives who has always, always been there when we've needed her. Of course, her training as a dancer crept in. She used to push me up against the wall and press my abdomen to correct my persistent slouch. And she taught me to tie my once long, unruly hair into a perfect top knot. As we got older, she invited us to events. Alvin Ailey at City Center, Philodanko at the Joyce, Paul Taylor at Lincoln Center. For me, it was at these events that I started to become aware of the Mary Hinkson that many of you know. First of all, she was given complimentary orchestra seats. <laughs> what was the deal with that? <laughs> During intermission, men and women of all different ages would greet her, kissing her hand and smiling warmly. Once, we were invited to a VIP event after a performance, and I, as I observed how the young dancers in the room regarded her, I realized that Jeremy and I are chap a chapter in her life and that we know very little about the ones that have preceded it. So I began to ask questions and she would tell me stories of how she stumbled upon dance at the University of Wisconsin, of Martha Graham's eccentric ideas and of their professional and personal relationship which oscillated between tumultuous and deeply fulfilling, of how she loved to teach and wishes she could have taught more of her tour with Harry Belafonte and Alvin Ailey, when Alvin Ailey lathered himself in Vaseline so his brown skin would glisten, making it very difficult for Peachy to hold on to him during the lips. <laughs> of sitting by a fountain in Italy, weeping as she held her dear friend and fellow Graham dancer, Matt Turney, when they got word of the Brown v. Board of Education ruling in 1954. 
Though I have always gotten the impression that Peachy identifies as a dancer before all else, it was stories like these last two that offered insight into how she experienced being a black dancer at the height of the civil rights movement. And I carry these stories and this legacy with me as I pursue academic degrees in African American studies. I continue to learn about my grandmother's many accomplishments every day, and I am so, so proud to call her my peach. And though I am not a dancer as she was, and though I did not grow up in the heart of the dance world as my mother did, Peachy has instilled in me a great love of dance, and I think that is the best gift she could ever give me. Thank you.